Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel, I'm Martin and today we're diving back into the Mad Max universe. This time with Beyond Thunderdome. Also this time we've added Tina Turner. Tina, there she is, can't see her, the, 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 the light is blowing her out but she's there. <laughs> As of all the Mad Max movies, this is the one that I feel like I don't really know what I'm getting into because I've heard conflicting things from people uh, who uh, have watched this film um this is the one mad max movie that i've never seen now up to this point and uh i don't know there seems to be a group of people who are very passionate about it and then on the other hand there seems to be a lot of people who say well that is quite clearly the weakest one of the bunch so my expectations are somewhere in the middle <laughs> um, i don't really know what to expect the fact that tina turner's in this is like, it seems like the most obvious version of stunt casting at face value. Maybe that isn't what it is. Maybe it's generally very good. But at face value, this seems like the most commercial, like, like someone behind the scenes was like, we need to make this a commercial success. We need to make this work for mainstream audiences. We're putting Tina Turner in there because that'll draw in a crowd. And, you know, it seems like it might be probably the least brutal i suppose if that's the right word for it i may be completely wrong about that and uh, who knows i all i've noticed that some people in the comments from my previous videos have said um this one feels quite different to all the other movies in the franchise and that's what i've heard like throughout my life whenever anyone has talked about the mad max movies that this one has a very different feel to it overall so let's do it. Let's jump into Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome and see what it's all about, shall we? Oh my god. Uh, there's a plane that sounds like a didgeridoo. <laughs> hey, is this guy? That guy was in the first, second movie. Get my facts right. It's the second movie. He was in the second one. The, oh my god, is this kid? The kid's flying the plane? That seems like a really bad idea. Barter Town. Helping build a better tomorrow, huh? Sounds like Wayland Utani to me. Don't you understand? It's just water. You can't be without it. <laughs> oh my god, don't drink it. No one drink it. No one drink that water. You will turn into a, a mutant. A ghoul. You'll turn into a two headed creature. That's my scientific opinion on that. Perhaps you've got something to trade after all. Keep talking. 24 hours of your life. In return, you'll get back what was stolen. Sounds like a bargain. Okay. Got up some dodgy deals. Max has had more dialogue in that one scene than the entirety of the last movie. There seems to be a distinct lack of cars in this movie so far. Every other movie makes a big deal out of cars. Jesus Christ, where did he pull that from? <laughs> Play something tan tan. Something tragic. Of course, Tina Turner would have her own personal saxophonist. <laughs> Just sitting in the corner. Play for me, sax man. That was a terrible shot. And that was a great shot. But that's... Of course... That's where you always store your knife inside a fly swat. <laughs> the first to survive the audition. Well, that doesn't bode well, does it? If that's the audition. Where there was despair, now there's hope. Civilization. I'll do anything to protect it. Today is necessary to kill a man. The second is it's a fair fight. The third is it's to the death. I've seen Max handle some stressful shit so far. I feel like in a fair fight, he's probably got the upper hand. What the fuck is... Well, here's our... how this town runs, I suppose. Built on the back of a bunch of slaves. Call it underworld. Pigs. Pig shit. The lights, the motors, the vehicles. Everything runs off a pig shit. I see a big guy giving a little guy a piggyback. Master Blaster. They're a unit. Master Blaster. We want to keep the brain. 
jump the body. So they've contracted him to kill a guy because he's an arrogant shit, but they want to keep the brain. If it's just the guy on top, they just want to get rid of his muscle. I mean, call me crazy, but I sense some kind of double cross heading towards Max. <laughs> In some way. It can't be that simple. I don't really know what to make of everything that's happening so far. <laughs> so far, there seems to be a quite a literal metaphor going on for like heaven and hell someone sitting in an ivory tower and then the pig shit underneath <laughs> oh god is it It's so weird how much dialogue Max has. Like, it's straight up weird. Who ran Barter Town? Damn it. I told you no more embargoes. So he's got leverage. Who ran Barter Town? Yeah. Louder. Master Blaster runs Barter Town. Like, she built this town. And then put him, presumably put him in charge of, like, keeping things running in terms of, like, their fuel. And now he's just like, well, I fucking own this place because without me, there is no fuel. Okay, you said a fair fight. What do you mean by that? As provided by the law. Okay, he thinks he can do it. He sized him up. He found out that he doesn't like loud, sharp noises. Noises? Noises. No Thunder down. How do I get in there? That's easy. Pick a fight. I feel like you can do that, Max. Like that's on your resume somewhere. Picking fights. Three seconds. Break neck. One. Two. Well, that escalated pretty fucking quick. You know the law. Two men enter, one man leave. Your choice. Thunderdome. Thunderdome, activate. <laughs> Here's the thing, I thought Tina Turner was going to be really distracting, but she isn't. She really isn't, though. She, she's just, you know, a part of this world as much as anybody else is. Maybe it's because I'm far enough removed from the original fucking, like, release of this movie that it's not hitting me like that. A man with no name. I mean, he's definitely got a name. <laughs> Did no one ask him his name before this? Oh my god, he's in like a bungee swing. I thought they were like tying him to the wall for some reason, but nope. Oh my god, this is... <laughs> I mean, it's unique. I'll give it that. I absolutely give it that. Oh my god. <laughs> This is like the most awkward fight I've ever seen. <laughs> Has it got any fuel in it though? Yeah, maybe in a world where <laughs> fuel is very scarce, picking up the one weapon that requires it, not, not the best idea. Oh my god. <laughs> Yep, there he goes. It's gone. It's gone. You used it. You used your one charge, Max. Right, well, there's no way Max was going to lose this fight. Damn. Well, the helmet's off. Yeah, I was going to say, like, it seemed like that was the case during the fight. It's not a this wasn't part of the deal. Deal? I'm talking to you. What do you mean, deal? I mean, you put that guy in this fight. <laughs> How can you claim any moral high ground here? We've only just begun. Oh, dude, that's... What a, tw what a twist. Who would have thought it that everyone in this city 
had ulterior motives and were, you know, bad. <laughs> What is the fucking wheel now? What's this shit? Who knew? Who could have guessed that all of this was going to backfire and Max was going to be at the sticky end of this? Justice, there's only a roll of the dice, a flip of the coin, a turn of the wheel. This movie has just become a game show. <laughs> it's just one long game show. What's it going to get? Round and round it goes. Ooh, gulag. Gonna hit the gulag. It's like fucking what Warzone now? Is it essential? I'm I'm going to go out on a limb and assume that gulag means you have to fight for your survival yet again. What the fuck is going on? I mean, okay. Why doesn't the wheel just say death? It may as well just say death. That's what that was. We're going to tie you up, put you on the horse, and wave, uh, wave you off. Goodbye. Fuck you. That poor horse. I feel bad for the horse more than anything. Save that horse at all costs. Two seconds later. I think the horse is dead. Well, that's even worse now. The horse is now sinking. So now all I'm wondering is that I assume the film is that Max will go back to Bart and I assume he still wants his vehicle back. But, you know, if I was him, I'd just, like, cut my losses right, right there and be like, fuck it. Or just die in the desert. That's the other option, I suppose. Max is like the luckiest character ever. Well, his, la his, his bad luck and his luck instantly, like, wear each other out. Constantly. <laughs> Something horrible will happen to him. But then the most fortunate thing will then happen immediately afterwards. <laughs> like, what are the odds of some random person finding him in the middle of the desert? Can you hear me? I feel like I've walked Yo, into, like... Friend? A Peter Pan tribute act, but these are like the Lost Boys from Never Never Land. <laughs> yeah, me, me, and you both, Max. Like that. What? <laughs> His expression is basically what is going on on my insides right now. Where is this going to go? <laughs> it was Savannah, so it only right that she take the tell. So I can do like a TV. What with the star? It's Poxaclips full of pain. Poxaclips. Max remembers. Max. Max was there apparently, so he he remembers that that bit. If it were burnt, get so lonely for the high scrapers and the, the video. <laughs> and they does the pictures. <laughs> So, so bizarre. <laughs> so they based a religion around a crashed plane, essentially. That's what's happening here. <laughs> Max looks so unimpressed by all of this. That ain't me. You got the wrong guy. There's no tomorrow land. And... I ain't Captain Wall. This is such a weird turn for this movie to take. We've, we've gone from Barter Town and all the shit that's going on there and discovered a tribe that's based its religion off of a crashed plane. Like, of all the directions I thought the movie might go in, this wasn't it. <laughs> <laughs> this is so I don't I don't every every ten minutes or so this movie does something I'm just like what what do I make of this? 
obviously Max is like that is the most delusional thing he's ever heard in his life. <laughs> if we want the known and the doing of things, there ain't no easy ride. The first place you'll find is a sleaze pit called Barter Town. Here we go. This is how uh, we're linking back in. First, that place sure as hell will. <laughs> well, we just didn't want her to lead all those people into certain death. She certainly wasn't listening. They're gone. We've got to get him back. Come on, they're gone. Oh, these kids have to stop with the weird zombie chanting. It's freaking me out. Half a night. Well, this just seems like a hindrance at this point. I'm trying to go and get your friends to stop them from getting themselves killed. And you're going to make me carry you on my shoulders. <laughs> oh my god. Are you, is he still holding on to the... Fucking bravo for not letting go. Oh god. No, they, they let go. This movie has a dead kid in it. There we go. He's gonna get covered in pig shit. Oh, that pig food. I was really hoping he'd get covered in pig shit. Didn't happen. Yay for the pig killer man! <laughs> Apparently. This movie, <laughs> fucking, I knew that was going to happen. It's so silly. This is by far like the most purposefully comical movie of them all. Yes. Covered in pig shit. It's what I wanted. It happened. Oh, I can sleep easy tonight now. <laughs> I'm a bit lost as to what Max's original plan was in coming here. But I feel it's turned into complete improv. <laughs> it's just like, okay, we're destroying the town now. That's what that's what we're doing. Well, here's the cars. We're in a Mad Max movie. We're down to maybe the last 15, 20 minutes. And we finally got to some cars. <laughs> so Max so is like, what's the plan? yeah, <laughs> right. What is the plan? Where are we going? Put the record in there. You've been waving that thing around for years. What's it going to be? Is it going to be a Tina Turner song? <laughs> now repeat after me. Bonjour. French Bonjour. lessons. <laughs> so, what? <laughs> Firstly, thank God it wasn't just a Tina Turner song. Not sure what the relevance of the French lessons is. <laughs> but there we go. Oh my god, that guy's fucking going for it. <laughs> this poor guy. What? Why didn't someone in the car just help him to start with? Why? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> this is ridiculous. This whole thing is ridiculous. <laughs> uh, Tina Turner just gave up there. She just, she was acting and then she was like, oh, fuck it. <laughs> Ooh, oh my god. Fuck me, look at this shit. Oh my god. This is insane. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god, is it the fucking kid from the start? Oh my god, the plane. Tell me the plane's going to come back into it. This is the only. This is the only way this whole plane worshiping business comes back round on itself. 
is if this lot discover the plane. You. Me? You. It's your lucky day. Do they not know each other? You got a plane. I have. I thought it felt like they knew each other, but they should know each other. Is he playing a different character? Is that what's happening here? Between them and us, it's not enough runway. The longer you wait, the less runway you have. This is so weird. It's as if in the last 20 minutes, the movie decided to become a Mad Max movie. All of a sudden. Just, you know, on a whim. Let's do it. Let's, <laughs> let's make a Mad Max movie. What were we doing earlier? <laughs> Well, it's all those people horribly crash. They deserve it. It's fine. Well, ain't we a pair? Okay then. Goodbye, I mean, soldier. I was about to say what would be the point in killing him at this point, really. Ooh, that was <laughs> that was a movie. <laughs> that was absolutely a movie. Okay, that was the reaction to Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome. If you enjoyed it, please hit the thumbs up button. Maybe consider subscribing. As of recording this video, we're nearly at 1,000 subscribers. So if you want to help be a part of that first 1,000 community, please do push up those numbers. And there will be a Q&A once I've passed 1,000 subscribers. If you have any questions, please go to the link to the video in the description and uh, submit your questions there. And just thank you all for subscribing. We're nearly there. Thank you, everyone who has been doing that. Okay, <laughs> Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome. That was outright one of the most bizarre movies I've ever seen. <laughs> I don't know. I true like I've said this before in the other movies when after watching them because there's I don't know themes and complex and characters and stuff and I'm just like where do I start? We're talking with this. I have no idea where to start <laughs> with this. First things first, because it's right here at the top of my head, just coming out, finishing watching the movie. It feels like George Miller directed like the first 10, 15 minutes and like the last 30 minutes of this movie. And I saw that this was directed by George Miller and someone else. And I don't know the behind the scenes of this film. I don't know stories or anything to do with how this came to be, the production, anything. But just going off of feeling the only segment the only segments of this movie that felt like a mad max movie was as i say the opening 15 or so minutes and the last 20 and that's what it feels like george miller directed <laughs> i don't know if there's any grounds for reality in that but that is just my very initial feeling this is probably my least favorite of the mad max movies i don't think that's an unpopular opinion um, there is good stuff here though. We'll get to that. There's definitely good stuff here. I just feel like a lot of the movie Like it started with something like it felt like the beginning of the movie had an idea it had a plan It knew what the story was going to be and Then it hit a certain point and then it just became Stuff happening Was <laughs> and then them trying to to link it back up like what about the tribe like the rest of the tribe are we not we not going back for them or are we just going fuck those guys we're, we're out of here but bye doodles we're have fun in your canyon with all the water and stuff we found sydney by the way um but fuck you <laughs> I'm like what what was going on with that it just it feels like there was two different visions going on here and i don't know what or where those two visions were coming from. Um, I don't know if that was the case at all, but from my perspective of what I just watched, that's what it feels like. It feels like there were more chefs in the kitchen here and there were some conflicting ideas and whoever tried to edit this thing together and put it together tried their very best, their very, very best to make it coherent and make it some kind of sense out of it and now just because i'm just thinking about this now um all the kids like the, the ones who decided to run off into the desert and try and find this beacon of the future that they've been looking for 
the fact that they managed to fall into the exact same sinkhole in that entire desert that the horse got sucked into is incredible <laughs> that like that desert is miles and miles and miles long and wide and somehow they managed to fall in the exact same one <laughs> just 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 a little thing i've just suddenly popped into my head as i was just talking about that right before we the before i go off on any tangents or anything i just want to talk about that the actual part of the movie that felt like a mad max movie the aka the last 20 minutes or so was really good <laughs> I, I really enjoyed that last car chase like it felt like a step up from the previous film and like the involvement of having like a sort of train car hybrid going along and basing the chase scene around that and there were all kinds of great stunts and things going on loved all of it loved all of that it was it was just you know good mad max filmmaking that i love but no problems whatsoever the stunt work was incredible um all the creative ways of the vehicles being used and the way that they looked and all that stuff all of that was great really enjoyed that and i actually kind of enjoyed the, how the film opened with trying to show like the development of this universe this world and how a new society was starting to form out of the you know the apocalypse that has happened um What's a little bit strange here is that this film seems to insinuate that there was some kind of nuclear war, but I was always under the impression that um, that the whole apocalypse around the Mad Max world was more to do with like a steep decline in economics and fuel and just like eventually society just kind of collapsed onto itself. But here they seem to want to find a reason to logically explain why everything just looked like a wasteland um because like in the previous movies like um two and one to an extent but even though one has more of a dystopian feel there's still like buildings are still a society that is folding in on itself but here they wanted to actually say well this is why everything looks like a desert because there was some sort of nuclear war that happened and they also have like the like the nuclear radiated water supply and stuff so i don't know let me know in the comments let me, people who uh, have done maybe more reading and research into the mad max world and behind the scenes and seen these movies like more than i have can maybe explain that in a little bit more detail um but that was the impression i was under with the previous film at least it was just like a decline in society that created this apocalypse rather than some kind of nuclear explosion like obviously there was it's insinuated that there were wars and countries sort of just fell apart because of those wars but there was never ever like a insinuation of like nuclear warfare but i might be wrong about that i'll, I'll, I'll hold my hands up that that i might be just completely wrong and ignorant to that but no i really enjoyed those two things i enjoyed that final chase i enjoyed the opening sort of world building stuff that was going on i really enjoyed those things I said it in reaction, something that surprised me honestly was that Tina Turner really wasn't that much of a distraction. If anything, she kind of fits the aesthetic that the Mad World, Mad World, <laughs> Mad Max universe goes for. Like this just very eccentric, big um, kind of style and fashion and weirdness. Like that's, al that's always present in the Mad Max universe. It's part of what's made it um, so iconic is that is that kind of look and tina turner just her both her performance and her outfit and everything just sort of for me at least just sort of slotted in fine I, I was expecting to be really distracted by the fact that tina turner is in a mad max movie but didn't really happen at all for me like uh, she felt like a character within this world and like i and her motivations felt true enough to what a you know an antagonist in this universe would feel like so didn't really have a problem with that at all i think my main issues with this just as i say feel like like a pacing problem and an editing problem like it or maybe it was at a script level i'm not entirely sure where where the issues came in but it just there came a point near the start of the film where like i say things just started happening <laughs> and 
there didn't really seem to be a reason for them to start happening and then hurriedly there was a quick explanation as to why that just happened and it was just like okay okay <laughs> just like you can see in my reaction like it felt like every 10 minutes 15 minutes or so a new thing would happen and that new thing would sometimes not have anything to do with what had just happened and i was just like i just it like shook me like it just shook me from the story that i was currently following i was like okay what what <laughs> where's this going why what, what this is just such a weird turn and i just didn't know how to feel about it in the moment and i still don't quite know how to feel about some of those moments in the film like like the obvious big one is the the reveal of this tribe of kids just living in this canyon with the water and having this belief of uh of this tomorrow world that they'll get to go to if they can get this plane that crashed and find the resurrected captain and it was just a lot it was just a lot to take in all at once and it just seemingly came out of nowhere <laughs> like i feel like there is a like i get the point of introducing them because they want to show like the beginnings of a new society growing from the old one and they wanted the characters who started that society to be pure and innocent and i understand why or at least that's where they went with them again no idea what the process was behind the making of this movie but that's what i get from it like they wanted the the beginnings of a new actual society to come from something pure fine but i feel like we could have lost the whole plane crash thing like i don't feel like that needed to be there you could have just introduced them as this you know a group that were the polar opposite to barter town who are people who were trying to like extort take advantage of one another and you know just overall quite shitty and then just max coming to these group of people who are nice looking after one another helpful I don't feel like it was necessary to have this whole weird mythos about or religion even like it's a full-on religion for them about this crashed plane but I suppose that whole thing was made as a reason as to why she would want to save Max if she mistakes him for like their messiah effectively but I don't know I feel like you could have just done that. I say you could have just done that as they're a nice group of people she sees someone who's in trouble I will help this person and nurse them back to health and I don't know I feel like there would have there is a neater way to get to that point from A to B basically that's basically my point on it I just feel like there was a a big expedition dump that didn't really go anywhere other than to try and link in them getting to the plane at the end of the film to something that happened earlier that's really all it was so that's what I'm missing something again I'll hold my hands up if I am that's Please do explain if I have, if I've fucked it somewhere along the line. <laughs> there was, there is one specific moment in this film that irked me a little bit. Um, obviously, you had uh, the the master, uh, or the or the other uh, giant's um, name was it? Was it like? Let me look it up. Let me look it up before I fuck this up. Really. <laughs> right, got the names now. I'm good. <laughs> So the character of the, the Master Blaster, it irks me a little bit because at the start of the film when they're first introduced, they're shown as basically being the ringleaders of this torturous, uh, like almost slave labor, or like, to, like it's, it's unclear as a, if everyone there who is um, serving in the underground segment is there for punishment or if they're slave labor. Like it's made clear that at least some of them are there as punishment and he was branded and he was branded across his chest with what his crime was but there were people down there who had no branding at all so it's just a little bit unclear so I was, I was like am I meant to like when it's revealed that you're meant to be sympathetic towards them I kind of struggled with that a little bit because it like they seemed like they were being assholes and then suddenly there was a switch and then it was just like oh no you're meant to feel sorry for them and the way that the film did it, like by revealing that um, Blaster had like Down syndrome um, and had the mind of a child, felt kind of ingenuous to me. At least just coming directly out of the movie. I've just looked it all up and like bravo for the film for hiring an actor 
who actually had Down syndrome to play that role. But at the same time, I feel like the utilization of it is, I don't know, I don't, I do not know how I feel about it. It feels disingenuous, like the film was like, oh, we need the audience to feel sorry for him immediately. How do we do that? Oh, we give him a disability and we take advantage of the fact that he has a disability to make the audience feel sorry for him. If that, you get what I mean? Like, it's, I just feel like what it's going for is more complicated than what the film is doing, if that makes any sense. And it just kind of irked me a little bit. Like, it irked me the wrong way that it, it, it felt like the movie was taking advantage of the fact that this character and indeed the actor playing it, apparently, as I've just discovered, indeed had Down syndrome. And you're using using that as a quick get out of jail card. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it, I'm not sure. I, it just just has it just irked me. Coming directly out of the movie, it just irked me a little bit the wrong way. Um, because I just don't think it was handled particularly well. But yeah, and then with with that said. Just the fact that there's this switch, I just don't feel like the moment was earned in the way that the movie thought it would have been earned. I don't know. I don't know. I feel like it's a. I'm not really the right person to probably be commenting on, on this stuff, but I'd be interested to see how all of you feel about that specific moment and the stuff around it. Um, and, you know, pull me out of my bullshit if you like. Um, that's absolutely fine. <laughs> <laughs> but gut reaction coming out of the movie that's where i'm at with that whole sequence the other thing that i found really weird is that we got the guy from the second film back here playing a different character seemingly but who also could fly a plane why <laughs> why not just have it be the same person i mean i get that the guy from the second film is meant to be leading that like community and being the leader now so it wouldn't make much sense but it makes just as about as much sense as him being a completely different person in this film. I assume they just liked working together and they just wanted to cast him again. But what made it weirder is that the film went to lengths for them, like Max and that character, not to see each other until the final act. Like it went to strive to, for them not to get a good look at one another. And then when they finally do, Max reacts in such a way where he seems like he recognizes who he is but then he's actually just referring to the fact that he's the guy who, who like got his car stolen in the first place it was just an odd odd choice um not one i hate or anything i just found just found it to be a bit odd and a little bit confusing just watching the film for the first time i'm sure if i rewatched it, it wouldn't bother me whatsoever but first time watching gut reaction as i say that it's just a bit weird <laughs> especially having literally like a couple weeks ago having watched the second film <laughs> the biggest praise i can give this film is that it feels unique to itself including within the mad max pantheon right like i i have to give it praise for at least attempting to be its own thing within a franchise which is you know not an easy thing to do i don't think it completely worked all in all and I think what's telling about that is the fact that the best part of the movie, at least for me, was the sequence at the end that felt like a Mad Max movie. <laughs> um, but maybe that's just me. Maybe that's just my sensibilities and stuff. I, who knows? But all in all, I do, I do appreciate that they went for something different or tried to make, like steer the ship in a different direction rather than just rinse and repeating what had already happened. Um, I know I got a bunch of comments in the Mad Max 2 video where everyone was giving me shit for liking Fury Road. Um, thanks for that, guys. You're, you know, thank you so much for giving me shit for liking a movie. Um, it's appreciated. <laughs> I am fascinated, though, to know what people think of this film. Because like I said at the very beginning of the video, I've heard people say both things as a like a distinct pocket of people who seem to really enjoy this movie and i feel i can see where that comes from because this movie strives to be its own thing and i think that's probably why they like this movie so much and then there's another portion of people who are like very indifferent to not liking it because probably because of the like 
polar opposite of that. And I don't think there's a right or wrong answer, really. I think there are things you can critique about this movie in terms of how it's put together, its structure, how it's edited, stuff like that. But in terms of trying to be its own thing, I think that's kind of subjective, and I can understand why people would find it appealing that a Mad Max movie would do something all to itself and onto itself and be weird and trying to be bizarre, even with its within its own context of being in the Mad Max world. But for me, as I say, coming directly out of it, um, this is probably the one that is l like lowest for me out of all the Mad Max movies, um, now that I've seen them all. Um, maybe that opinion would change in time, who knows? But as of right here, right now, that's where I'd put it. Also from now on, I'm not gonna be ranking movies like a, out of a 10 scale because I, d I don't feel like I've been thinking about this. It's not particularly helpful for me and I don't think it really means anything at the end of the day, especially when I'm going through my head, well, I gave this movie this, so I can't give this movie that, because I feel like I like that movie more. So from now on, I'm just going to go on, would I recommend people go out and watch the movie for themselves? That kind of thing. For me, if you enjoy the whole Mad Max stuff and you've not watched this movie yet, I would say go and watch it, because as I say, I feel like you're either going to fall on one side or the other, and you're not going to know if you fall on whatever side unless you go out and watch it so if you enjoy the mad max stuff and you want to experience the whole package i would say go and watch it and make your own mind up about this one if you're kind of indifferent to all of mad max then i feel like this is the one you know you can either miss or you know save till last if you really want to complete the whole thing but final thoughts are i appreciate that it tried to do something new don't think it all worked um, really liked the end chase sequence. That's basically my thoughts in a very, very small nutshell for this movie. Um, but yeah, that was Mad Max 3 Beyond Thunderdome. Thank you for watching this video, guys. If you enjoyed it, please hit the thumbs up button. It helps you get seen by more people and maybe consider subscribing so you don't miss any future content. That's also the best way to let me know that you're enjoying this stuff and you want to see more. Other than that, as I say, thank you for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it. And hopefully, I will catch you on the next one.